This video is sponsored by Squarespace. I'll talk more about Squarespace later on in the video. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Viet Vegan because I'm Viet and I'm vegan. And today we're making a classic Japanese dish, which is katsu. Today I'm using tofu. You can do the Mary's Test Kitchen double freeze method for an extra chickeny tofu situation, but I didn't really do that. And honestly, this is probably Eddie's latest favorite way that I've been preparing tofu. It's super simple. It takes on flavor super well. And in this particular instance, I'm just using tonkatsu sauce and vegan mayo. You'd think that that would be too simple, but it is very delicious. But he's looking forward to me making some Japanese curry to go with this because that is another classic way of having katsu. So we're starting off with some white rice. I'm using jasmine rice here and I'm cooking it in a rice cooker. Don't ask me how to cook the perfect rice because I don't know because I just use a rice cooker. To prepare the tofu, I'm just draining this block of tofu. Again, you can use double frozen tofu, but I didn't do that this time because I'm lazy. So you drain the tofu. I use a tofu press. I only press it for about 15 minutes while I'm prepping the other ingredients. But if you want to you know, squeeze out more water out of your tofu, feel free to do that. Once I have it in the tofu press, I generally turn the whole thing upside down and drain it into the container that the tofu came in in the first place. So now we're prepping our wet mix and our dredge to be panko crusted because that's how you get that good, good crusty tofu. So for the wet dredge, I'm using a vegan yogurt here. This is a vegan coconut yogurt. You can use vegan sour cream or vegan mayo instead. And if you're using vegan mayo, I would omit the garlic salt and just switch to garlic powder instead. And then for the dredge mix, I'm using potato starch, garlic powder, onion powder, and white pepper. If you don't have white pepper, you can also sub black pepper. And if you don't want to use potato starch or if you don't have potato starch, you can substitute cornstarch instead as well. Give everything a nice little mix and then prepare your panko crusted sheet pan. I like to have a big surface for me to coat all of my tofu cutlets in because then I can just leave them in the pan while I wait for for the oil to heat up. So once your tofu is fully pressed, I like to cut it into slabs of six. You can cut it into thinner ones if you like. It's honestly up to you. This is just the sizing of cutlet that I really enjoy. So for one block of tofu, which is about 400 grams, I get about six tofu cutlets. Then I just blot everything dry with a little bit of paper towel. You can also use a lint-free tea towel. I just didn't have any clean ones on me at the time. So you just wanna blot everything so it's nice and dry, then dredge it into the dry mix. So this is just so that the entire surface is like really nice and dry and that the wet mix can really stick to the tofu. You don't want anything to be largely clumpy. You just want it to be a nice, even, thin coating. Once all your cutlets are nice and dredged into the dry mix, now it's time to coat them into the wet mix. I like to make sure that it's a really nice and thin coating. You don't want any big clumps of yogurt. You just, again, want this to be like the glue that sticks to the panko. So I like to do this about two cutlets at a time. It's kind of hard because I you use your hands to kind of scrape the yogurt off, but you make it work. And that's why I like having a larger surface for the cutlets to kind of sit in. Um, and then you panko crust them until they're nice, crusted, coated for that good, good katsu cutlet situation. Typically, katsu is made with chicken or pork. You might have heard of tonkatsu, which is the pork version of a cutlet panko crusted thing. And then there's chicken katsu. From what I've been able to see, the more traditional ways of serving this is on like a bed of shredded cabbage with rice or with the Japanese curry or with ramen. But honestly, it's a panko crusted crispy cutlet. It is good pretty much any way you want. Your pan of oil should be heated through. I have about a half inch of oil or about a one to two centimeters of oil in there because I don't want it to be a really deep fry. I'm just doing a shallow fry this time. It should be hot enough so that when you drop a piece of panko in, it'll start to sizzle. So once your oil is nicely heated through, add in your katsu to be fried. So you're gonna cook one side until it's nice and golden and then flip and then cook until both sides are evenly golden. This should take about two to three minutes per side, depending on how hot your oil is. In between frying different cutlets, take like a skimmer and just sort of skim out the pieces of panko crumb that have fallen off your cutlets. You don't want your oil to darken from the burnt panko crumbs. Continue frying until all your katsu is nice and cooked through and then let drain on a paper towel. 
Before we finish cooking the katsu, let's talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is your go-to place to build a beautiful website. They do all the complicated coding for you and leave you with so many different drag and drop templates where all you need to do is add your content so you can focus on your business and not worry about having to code your website. Add your own domain or buy one through Squarespace, send newsletters with their built-in email marketing tools, optimize your strategy using their analytics, sell your merch, whatever website needs you have, you can do it with Squarespace. If you have a business, a food blog, a side hustle, or you need to show off your portfolio, get started today by going to squarespace.com slash vegan and use code vietvegan to get 10% off your first order. We've got our crispy katsu. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. You think it's too simple, but honestly, the crunch, the sauce, the mayo, the rice, everything just works so well together. Very good, 10 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed this recipe, and if you did, give it a like, comment down below, and let me know if you try it. Tag me on Instagram. I'm the Viet Vegan pretty much everywhere. This was very good, and I've continued to eat this multiple times since making this recipe. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a delicious day. Bye.